Hello and welcome. In this video lesson, you will see a demonstration of setting up and running a transient flow calculation in ANSYS Fluent. In the case we are going to set up and solve, air is flowing through a planar channel and there is a square cylinder in the channel. The width of the channel is 0.5 meter and the cross section of the cylinder is 0.1 meter. The velocity is only 0.03 meters per second. The Reynolds number, based on the cross-section of the cylinder, the velocity of 0.03 meters per second, and the properties of air, is 200. So, the flow is laminar. The mesh file provided is two-dimensional. Open ANSYS Fluent Launcher, select Solution Mode, 2D, Double Precision and start ANSYS Fluent. In ANSYS Fluent, load the MESH file. There are really only a few steps to set up a transient simulation in ANSYS Fluent. First, I will go to the Physics tab and in the General Task page, I will select Transient. Then, as the case is laminar, I will go ahead and click Viscose and select Laminar. Next, I will set the inlet velocity to 0.03 meters per second. Then, I will go to Solution and click Solution Methods. In Solution Methods, I will change the pressure-velocity coupling to PISO because that is what is recommended by the user's guide for transient calculations. I will also change the transient formulation to bounded second order implicit, which is recommended in the user's guide when you want improved accuracy. Now I will go to solution controls and change the under relaxation factors for pressure and momentum to 0.8. The user's guide recommends using values of 1 or close to 1 when using PISO, but I can almost never get it to work with 1. You can always try one and see if it works, but if the solution blows up, then a range of 0.7 to 0.9 is usually pretty good. If it still diverges, then you probably have to reduce the time step. Next, I will make a report definition for the lift force on the walls of the object. The lift force is normal to the flow, so it is a good way to observe the vortex setting frequency. In order to detect the passage of the vortices, I will also add one more report definition for the Y velocity at a monitoring point downstream of the cylinder. For this, I will first create a point at x equals 1 meter. Then, I will create a new surface Vertex Average Report definition for the velocity at the monitor point. In residuals, I will change the value of iterations to plot to 100. This makes it easier to view the residuals after a large number of time steps. To see what I mean, here is a plot from an unsteady case with 100 iterations being plotted. And now, here is a plot with the default settings. Since it is just a display plot, it doesn't really matter which one you use. I like the first one better, so I want people to know about it. I will now set up a vector animation. For this, I will first need to initialize the solution. Then, I will create a new vector. I will then add a new mesh for the boundaries of the domain and create a scene using the vector and the mesh. Finally, in the Solution tab, under Activities, I will create a solution animation of scene 1. The last thing I will do is set the autosave to write data files every 10 time steps. When you do a transient calculation in ANSYS Fluent, it does not store the entire time history of the solution. 
all it knows is the solution in the current time step. If you want to go back to the solution at some intermediate time, then you have to have a data file for that time. Autosave is a convenient way to automatically save files at predefined intervals throughout the calculation. All the setup steps have been completed, but there are still one or two more things to do before starting to iterate. One important step is to determine what time step to use and you can use the Struhal number to help with this. The Struhal number is a dimensionless number that describes oscillating flow mechanisms. It is defined as the product of the vortex setting frequency and the diameter of the cylinder divided by the velocity. If you know the Struhal number, then you can figure out the vortex setting frequency and that will tell you what time step size to use. I spent a few minutes on Google and found that the Struhal number of a square cylinder in cross flow is around 0.14. The actual value in this problem might be different because the proximity of the channel walls might have an effect on the vortex setting, but it is good enough for an estimate and we do not need a precise value, just one that is in the right range. The velocity is 0.03 meters per second and the square is 0.1 meters across and this gives a vortex setting frequency of around 0.04 Hz which means each oscillation cycle will take around 25 seconds. You normally want to have around 20 time steps per cycle, but since 25 is not too different from 20, I will just leave the time step size at one second. Time step size will vary from one problem to the next, and for any given problem it could be as low as milliseconds or even smaller or it might also be as high as tens of seconds. For transient problems, I almost always like to open the Run Calculation task page by clicking Run Calculation here in the ribbon. Sometimes the time step size and number of time steps are all you need to enter. We are just going to use a fixed time step with a time step size of one second. Another thing I want to do in this panel is enter the number of iterations per time step. 20 is a good value for many cases. Sometimes you may need to adjust this depending on the convergence behavior. Remember that this is a maximum value and most of the time we hope that the solution will converge in fewer iterations. Sometimes you will be interested in calculating the time average velocities or other flow variables. You can do that by checking data sampling for time statistics. Just so you can see how it works, I will do that here. Just like steady state simulations, it's necessary to initialize the solution before ANSYS Fluent can begin to solve. For this problem, I will just use default initialization and click Initialize. There are some things I want to show you really quickly, so first I will do just 25 time steps. First, I want to check the residuals to make sure the solution is converging and you can see they are reaching the convergence criteria every time and there is a nice sawtooth pattern like we discussed. It is a really good idea to start with a small number of time steps and check to make sure the solution is ok because if something is wrong, it is better to correct it now than to find out about it after the end of the whole calculation. The other thing I wanted to show you was that if you look at the report plot, you can see that the flow is not exactly periodic during the first time steps. This is typical for transient simulations. Due to the influence of the initial condition, there will often be some abnormal behavior when the solution first starts and you have to run the solution for some amount of time to allow the effect of the initial conditions to die off. Report plots are a very good way to check for this. Now I will do more time steps to allow for periodic behavior to develop and that might take two or three minutes to happen, so let's just skip ahead. So after enough time steps, the report plots show nice periodic behavior. I can now go to the results tab and play back the solution animation. 
and just for fun, since the mean and RMS values were calculated, I can go to the unsteady statistics category and display contours of the time averaged velocity field. So, that's the end of the demo. Thank you very much for watching.